Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris here and welcome to an unboxing slash shooting test slash first impressions video because they're all going to be put together and edited together later in this one video. I got this today. I'm super excited because this is actually my new M9, my new sidearm. Oh, spoil it. We haven't even started. The, we haven't even unboxed it yet, but that's okay because it's going to be in the title. So what's it matter? And I definitely haven't had an M9 since... that clip, which is very old, and as you can tell by the audio, the camera, and the date that I put in the corner. It's been quite a long time, so I'm excited to have an M9 again, because I, I don't know, dude, they're just, they're just nice and comfy, so we're gonna see how this works out. God, this box is so heavy. All right, so first thing that we get inside, first of all, I did order a second mag, because obviously I need a second mag, but that is one thing about this gun that I do like, is that it actually, has a 25 round magazine, which is pretty sweet. Now I did get the CO2 version of this gun, as you'll see, well, I don't know why I'm opening this. I don't, you don't need to see the Allen key. I was originally gonna get the green gas version of this gun, but I decided to go with a CO2 because I'm just more familiar with CO2. I already bring the CO2 with me anyway, and green gas is just another thing I have to get used to and whatever, so. Here is the box for the gun. This is the Mod 92 a1 Beretta and one thing I want to point out that I don't like about this box is that it's just desaturated like there's not like the color is super mute which I don't like because that makes me think either this box has been sitting in the sun for 10 months or it's just bad quality but it's not the box looks fine it's actually got obviously the uh, the gun on the front it's got the velocity warnings all over the box and yeah so nothing crazy so we're gonna go right ahead and open it. Looks like we have plenty of descriptive information for the gun in here. We have exactly like tutorials, how to access everything, how to do everything. So it's a very detailed booklet. I do always hang on to these just in case in a, in a little box. So I'm definitely gonna hold on to that one because it has plenty of information. I don't need these UMRX cards and stuff like that. This is all pointless to me. Get the feel. Oh man, is that heavy. It's not crazy heavy, but it's still heavy. Uh, what else is in the box right here? Got another Allen key, good. Can never have too many Allen wrenches. I dropped my knife. So, this is the M9, and it's full metal, and it's still got a little bit of residue oils in there. You guys can see, see how that looks. It's pretty nice, got a nice little sheen to it, and it definitely has a weight. Man, let me tell you, those sights are nice and clear. And let's see what we got. So eject the mag, the mag comes already inside. So right here, make sure my mags are actually matching, which they are, that's nice. I don't want to get two slightly different mags. We have an ambidextrous selector switch right here, which is cool, very awesome. And let's go ahead and switch that to red as fire. Ooh, it's a good slide. I know, sorry, that sound might be annoying, but it's a good slide right here. I want to test the greasing of it. There's so much grease and oil on it. It's nice. Let's test the trigger. So it continues to slap the hammer with no mag. And let's test out the safety. All right, so the safety, the trigger still pulls, but no action happens. No action happens. I want to test something. Pull back the hammer. So with the safety on, the hammer does not stay locked back, which is cool. So it doesn't get lodged like that. Mag doesn't feel very loose. Let's test the drop. So it looks like it drops about half to a third of an inch before it doesn't slide anymore right there. I mean, it's new, so obviously, who knows? So it looks like the release is, it's a pretty nice solid release. Um, all, only on one side, only for righties is the release, which is kind of weird because you have the ambidextrous uh, selector switch or safety switch, but it, uh, doesn't have a ambidextrous trigger release, so that's interesting. Oh, and actually, I didn't even realize, I didn't know this, um, it actually has a little uh, Picatinny mount right there on the bottom, so that's cool. That means I can actually, if I want, I can attach my GoPro to the side if I do a pistol game with it. But um, for first impressions, when it comes to the feel, because obviously I'm not shooting this tonight, but it feels very comfortable, very sleek, very smooth. And one thing about this gun that uh, I like about it is that it's actually uh, it has a full auto function for being CO2, which I found interesting. That's another reason why I got two mags, because the mags are 25 rounds, but 
being full auto, I can spend one of these mags or one of the CO2 cartridges very quickly. But we're going to test that. We're going to see how that all works when I get to the actual shooting test. And yeah, so obviously we're going to go ahead and cut it head to that. Okay, hey guys, we're down here at RG's pick. Gonna go ahead and shoot the M9. By the way, if you hear any noise in the background, vehicles or gunshots, that's because, like I said, this is RG's pick where I filmed that GoPro video um, to show you about the Hero 7 Silver. So we're gonna go ahead and chrono and do some test shots on the M9. I got it all loaded and ready. I forgot to bring targets with me um, because, again, this isn't my land, so it's setting up here is a little bit like set up and go, set up and go kind of thing. So I am just gonna like shoot some trees, shoot a couple things you guys can see me shoot, and also just try out the chrono. So we're gonna start off by just testing its responsiveness and see how the full auto and everything works. Okay, so it seems like when you first pull the trigger, the trigger starts, the trigger starts at about here, and then you pull it back, and then it kind of locks in place about halfway back, to make the next few trigger pulls easier. Pretty nice and responsive. Not bad. Okay. So I am, just so you guys know, I am using 0.25 gram BBs because I'm all out of point twos, unfortunately. So I have about 10 or so shots. I'm gonna go ahead and run through this and we're gonna see how it feels. So those are our shots consistent. So we did a, let's see, a maximum of 311 and a minimum of 265 with an average of 298. So we're still averaging about three. And like I said, these are with 0.25. So if I find the right BB combination, I might be able to get a little bit higher up. But, and this gun's also brand new out of the box. So it needs to be broken in a little bit, but still that's not bad at all. And as you can see, after I spent that last round that it does have a working slide catch. And then we're gonna go ahead and test the release. Very nice. Now this over here is where you're gonna find your selector switch for full auto. Right now it's on single. This little knob right there, flick that up, and now we should be in full auto mode. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a try. Oh, I just missed it. They were just firing something full auto over there. As soon as I went to full auto, they started shooting guns at full auto. I was just like, ticka, 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 ticka. All right, so hopefully they don't shoot while I'm doing this. We're gonna go ahead and try it out. Ooh, oh, there they go. Oh, that is nice. That spent almost all of my mag. That spent almost all my mag in like a one and a half second trigger pull. So if I need to use full auto, I better have my second mag out or it better be a last resort. Oh, that is gnarly. <laughs> that is, I want to do that again. Give me, give me a minute to reload. This next mag right here is the same one that I just shot with full auto. I want to see if it can handle, if this canister, this 12 gram canister of CO2 can handle another full auto mag. We're going to see. I'm going to do it in like a half burst, half burst to make sure that the CO2 doesn't get too cold inside the gun. So I'm going to be shooting this pot on the ground because I want to hear it go to ting. Okay, so I couldn't quite hear it go ting from behind it, but maybe you guys did. Anyway, so one... One cartridge of CO2 so far is rated for at least two magazines of full auto, so that's pretty nice. And also, one thing I did want to note is that when the hammer is engaged and I switch it to safety, it disengages the hammer and resets the trigger, which is very nice. I like that feature a lot. That's, that's really cool, honestly. So we're going to go ahead and switch to my last magazine, and we're going to go ahead and actually go for a test of accuracy. I mean, like I said, I don't have any targets, but I'm just going to aim and see where it goes in comparison to where I'm aiming. So, just, you guys are gonna watch me shoot. It's fucking buggy out here. I'm aiming for that. So it looks like right here out of the box it's shooting a little bit low. It's just, the hop-up is going down a little bit, so I will need to adjust the hop-up. I believe it has adjustable hop-up. If not, well, I'll need to aim high. Alright, I'm going to test this trigger response rate for these last few shots. Okay. Not as responsive as my 1911. My 1911 was like, I could just go full on Modern Warfare 2 FAL on that bitch. Just tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, just like that. But this one seems a little bit slower because it's such a wide... Kind of like that. 
feel like the trigger is just set really far forward, which means there's so much more of a trigger pull that you have to make. Even when it's even when the hammer's engaged and everything, it's still like maybe down back to here. So it's still enough of a trigger pull because it doesn't actually fire until you reach basically the end of the gun in here inside the trigger. So the trigger response rate's a little bit slow, but I think this gun's really just meant to be full auto, honestly. Like single fire, yeah, that's great. Full auto is where your money's at. Just so. That is the shooting test, and then join me back later for final thoughts. Okay, guys, so for final thoughts, I, I figured it'd be best where I pull up and show you guys the gun on evike.com, and as you can see, I got it for about $134.95, and then on top of that, about $40 for an extra magazine. So the magazine is definitely really expensive. The gun itself is uh, pretty widely regarded as good. I mean, I never fully trust reviews online, but I do always read through them because I know companies pay to have the best reviews, obviously up on top but there are 33 total customer reviews and it's i mean five stars so just at a first glance you can definitely tell that it's at least somewhat re respected among the community so at a first glance basis and at a first testing basis when it comes to shooting and just kind of checking out the gun i would say i recommend it i do plan on using it in uh the upcoming games because that's my now main sidearm i will use it as a secondary whenever i'm playing but in case that never really gets a lot of showing off, I will do a pistol gameplay on its own so you guys can see how it kind of works and operates at when it's my only main gun. So yeah, for final thoughts, recommended. Pretty good. Um, it was it was keeping around the 330 FPS range, which I'm surprised at. But again, 0.25 gram BBs. We'll see how it works with some 0.2s. And yeah, not really much of the final thoughts. Sorry, I think I said everything I could in the videos. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, check out my other reviews and unboxings and gameplay. See you guys in the next one. Later.